Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Welcome to another day. I really appreciate you being here. I want to start by saying that it's just so wonderful to have you as part of my day. I got up really early this morning as I, I've been doing lately and um, it's a quite a sunny summer day so I went out early for a walk and um, something happened that reminded me of a topic that I wanted to chat with you about so I just wanted to, to share with you my morning escapade. But uh, first... <laughs> I came back and had a cup of tea and I've got my lemon ginger. Now, lemon ginger is one of my favorites because it's so good for you. Um, I've had a little bit of a summer cold. Oh, well, it's not really summer, but spring cold. And this ginger really, I think, helps. Ginger, turmeric, a bit of pepper. That's my drink. But this is just a, a Twinings lemon ginger, and um, I, I like it. So maybe you've got a drink, coffee, juice, whatever you love, and uh, we can just start our, our morning together. Now, I do know that we have women in the other part of the world who are watching us at night. So welcome to you too. And um, you can just think about this advice for tomorrow. <laughs> so what happened was, it was very simple. I went out and um, I just, I don't normally take my full bag or I think I just took a little handbag and popped on this top, which has, um, you know, pockets in it so I could keep my hands warm if it got cold down by the lake. And I went out and um, had a really nice walk. There were lots of people out actually. There were dogs and people just ra rambling around. And I got home and I reached in my little bag and I couldn't find my key. And I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I know I put that. I always put my key in my bag. Like I have a ritual. That's my, that's my place. And I just, my, my heart just stopped because here in Switzerland, like I'm sure in a lot of apartment buildings, if you lose your key, it's a big deal. You've got to get a new one and it costs money. And um, I was like, oh don't do this. And I, I, and again, I went through that conversation of like, you know, Margaret, you've got to stop remember forgetting things. You've got to get better at focusing, <laughs> focus. <laughs> anyway, so I sat down on the step and I was like, all right, where did I go? Did I shop anywhere? No. Anyway, I just put my hands in my pocket and ta -da, there were the keys. So it was like, okay, why did I put them in my pocket? I never put them in my pocket. I hardly ever wear something with pockets. But there they were. And then I came. So it, it was just that made me think about memory. And I wanted to chat with you about it because somebody, one of our bloggers, Noreen Koslar, wrote an article and she has some really cool ideas for, for memory. And I thought I'll share it with you. And because I bet some of you have had that key moment or some other moment <laughs> where you swear you put it where you thought you put it, but you just didn't. Anyway, you know, there's lots of things you can do for your brain. We've been through some of these in the past. Like, for example, doing things that your brain doesn't expect. Your brain loves to be tricked. It's kind of a, it's, it's a device that likes new things. So, for example, brushing your teeth with your left hand if you're right-handed or vice versa. Um, you know, doing something like walking um, to the shops in a different way or driving in a different way. You're doing things that are kind of surprising to your brain. And um, she talks more about the strategies then that we can use to really create some ritual and some uh, focus in our, in our lives. And just be aware that your brain is super sensitive to your environment. And, excuse me. And the word new, it gets all excited. It loves new. It loves to learn new things. So give your brain a chance to discover new things because that's where the memories come, you know, the memory markers, the things that make our life so special. But the brain loves novelty and it loves different things. So give it, um, give it a little entertainment uh, now and again, and that will make you feel good too. Now, some of this stuff can be, can be quite obvious and others can be subtle. And she talks about habits. Now, habits for, I mean, I have many habits that keep my life organized. And I, to be honest, I have found since I've gotten older, I've gotten better at it. I mean, when I go traveling now, honestly, touch wood, <laughs> lots of wood. I, I have never really lost anything. I think I left a beret on a train once, but I've got some real good systems for putting things in the right place, remembering where they are, and consciously I'm putting my keys in my whatever. And that's really worked for me when I travel. And I always, when I come back, I always put things back in the right place. I could put my passport back where I got it from. I keep it in a safe place. I put my bag of my what if bag from my travels. You know, my what if my what if I break my ankle? Um, what if I lose my glasses? And I put those in the same place so that when I go back to travel the next time, they're there. I can keep, I can keep an eye on them. So 
I think there's a lot of things that we can create uh, patterns and rituals for. Another thing is locking your door. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, obviously, when I go out, I always lock my door. And I'm sure that now, unless you live in a country where the, in a countryside where there's no one for miles and you leave your door open, locking your door is pretty important. But I have found that I will sometimes, honestly, get into such a routine of getting out the door, having checked the train schedule, um, you know, getting my phone together, make sure I've got my charger. I'll go out the door, I'll get down to the bottom of the lift and I'll think, did I lock the door? Because I do it all the time. You know, you do it so much a part of a ritual that you just like, and I will actually go back upstairs and check. And I usually, I don't think I've ever had a time where I didn't lock it, but I didn't remember at all. It was so much a part of my ritual. And I think that that's what, um, you know, Noreen says is, is a good habit to get into. Have a checklist in your mind. Now, she says the strength in unity and taking, you know, having people, uh, ha well, having memory joggers is actually part of that unity m mindset that you create. And, you know, if you can do that um, as a regular practice with the important things, then, okay, if you leave your, you know, leave your glasses behind one day or you forget, to, you know, to bring your charger for your phone, it's not the end of the world. One thing that she does suggest, and I do it too, is I have a bowl where I put my, my um, not my keys, because I have another place for my keys. I always put my keys, well, in the door. But the um, but I have a bowl that I put things that I don't always need with me on a on a trip. But if I um, was to need this thing, I would I would put it there. And she's got a funky, pretty bowl that she found somewhere. It's so unique and so new to her that she notices it. And you know, put it in a place like where you always can pop, um, pop your glasses or something that you need not every time or occasionally. And it becomes a habit. You do something. I think it's seven times. You get to, it gets to be a habit. She was saying, um, this is actually looking at my notes, she was saying that her grandfather, I think it was, or it was her dad, did, did something that was really, really cute. And he called it his hokey pokey. Now, if you are from the UK, and I know we've got lots of women from the UK, you know what the hokey pokey is. Well, it's a song. So it's uh, a song that I think it started during the war. But it's like you put your right hand out, your right hand in, your left hand or your right hand out and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Yay. And then you put your left hand in, your left hand out and so on. And there's like all these steps. You touch your ear, you pat your chest. And he did the hokey, hokey pokey to remind himself, like when he put his right hand out, did you have your glasses on? Your left hand, did you have your glasses case? put your, um, you touch your ear. Do you have your, your uh, keys? I mean, he had his whole little ritual, which I think is really, really cute. And he said that, um, uh, when the grandkids would come over uh, or the kids would come over, he, he would like really ham it up. You know, you put your, I've got my keys in my pocket. I've got my something in my, <laughs> whatever. And he had this great ritual, this hokey pokey. And I think that's cute, but it's whatever it works for you, but have a ritual, have a habit that helps you to organize yourself. So it's your turn. Give it a try. Maybe you've got something that you do. Share with us. And what are the things that you are most likely to forget when you go out somewhere? And what do you do to remind yourself to take them with you? I mean, do you literally stand by the door and go, got my wallet, got my phone, got my keys, got my glasses? Do you do a checklist like that? Do you have a hokey pokey that you do? Uh, do you have a, a physical list? Maybe you just carry a list. I'd really like to know what you do. What do you do to keep yourself organized and keep your memory sharp? <laughs> Let's share some notes. It'll be fun. So anyway, what are the things that you're most likely to forget or misplace? Keys. And uh, let's have a, have a conversation. Okay, everybody. Well, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you uh, don't forget anything today now that I've planted the seed in your mind. But have a wonderful day. Take very good care of yourself. Go out and do something special for you. And know that we're here all together tomorrow and we'll take really good care of yourself. And I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye-bye for now.